up, road trippers? Dwayne back here at uh, Longo Weidman MMA, and I'm standing here with one of the brightest young stars to come up in this, uh, this fight game in a long time, Al Jermaine Sterling. What's up, man? Thanks for taking the time. Thank you. What's up? How you guys doing? So, we're driving across country, which we have. We're, we're almost towards the end of it. Came all, went from California to New Jersey, now up to Long Island. So, um, when you're on a road trip, what are three things that you need to, are, are, are a requirement? Good music, um, good company, and uh, three things. Yeah. Third thing, I don't know. Come on, man. One more. Good food. <laughs> <laughs> or I was gonna say he's so bad. He's, he's so bad, and so he needs two things. Uh, what, what are you listening to? What's in that? What's in that CD or that on your iPod? I mean, I got a, I got a bunch of different kind of genres of music I like to listen to. I got Coldplay. I got um, Fifty Cent. Eminem, um, Drake, definitely. My, even my little brother, he raps also. So I got a bunch of different things mm -hmm. I like to listen to. Well, what what might surprise me, make fans, about what what, uh, what you have in your uh, playlist? Um, I got a little P.O.D. Boom, you know. Here comes the boom. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. You probably wouldn't think I listen to music like that, but uh, yeah, pretty musically diverse. Uh huh. Well, I'll tell you what, I know we, we've done interviews before, um, this is our first you know, time seeing each other, but uh, uh, in this sport, you know, these guys that you're around, they all talk really, really, uh, really highly of you, man. How's it feel to be in a gym like this with so many talented guys? Man, it's, it's, it's awesome. Um, you know, we, we got, like you said, we got a lot of top level guys here, so it's, it's nothing but motivation to keep pushing and want to keep going for the top. You, know, you see somebody coming from the same neighborhood, like right around the same area, and they win a bell, that's, that's huge. So. It makes it definitely feel like it's something tangible and that can, something that can be achieved. And I know one day I'm going to get there. And you're you're uh, you're two and zero uh, in, in on the sports biggest stage, undefeated uh, as a professional. You know, how's it feel to uh, to be getting out in front of those big crowds and know that you're at the fighting at the top of the game now? It feels good. It's awesome, man. I feel like I've been built for this. You know, <laughs> um, I feel like my college career has been prepping me for this. I go out to nationals. It's kind of like the same thing. The dim lights. I, I kind of, I have a little mantra I say to myself, like I'm too tough, too strong, too quick, and I can't be broken. So um, when I go out there, I'm walking out towards that cage, I'm just like, man, this is my show, the lights are for me, they dim the lights, and it's, it's time to come alive in the nighttime. And, and uh, you know, anybody who doesn't follow this young man on Twitter has to. One of my favorite things you do on Twitter is that you are, you are uh, uh, crusading against PED usage in this sport. If you get pop for PED usage, this guy's coming after. I mean, this guy let people know. So, you know, what are your what are your thoughts when you see these things happen? Yeah, I, I think you're mentally mentally weak, man. If you really feel like that's the only way you can compete, something is wrong with you, and you're in the wrong sport. Um, I have nothing against it if you want to do it just for your personal feelings or benefits. But if you're gonna do that, don't you shouldn't be competing in a combat sport. I I think it's sports already dangerous enough. You know, we, we pride ourselves going out there, and um, we face a lot of humility. So. For you to go out there and take advantage of another guy training just as hard, and then you're getting a, a mental, a mental and physical edge against somebody, I think I think that's unfair, man. And uh, I don't like it. So if you get popped, man. I'm calling you out. I don't care. I'm calling you out. <laughs> yeah, he does, dude. That's what I say. I, I, every time it, it happens, and unfortunately, it does happen quite frequently, a little bit here and there. But uh, uh, yeah, I look I look on your Twitter. I'm like, what's Al Jermaine gonna say today? You know, because you, you do, and I, and I love it. So uh, so yeah, man. It, I know. Um, this is all kind of starting to move faster. I mean, um, uh, you know, this is where you want to be, but you're still so young. I mean, where, you know, I've, how do you feel right now? Where's your, your skill set coming? Like, um, you know, do you feel like everything's hit, hitting where you need it to hit at this time in your life? Yeah, I think um, everything's coming together slowly, but uh, sure enough, I, I definitely feel like I'm ready for those, those top level, high level matches against uh, these other guys, these top 10 guys. But, um, you know, one fight at a time, I think I'm proving little by little. And my confidence, man, is right there, right where it needs to be. And each performance, I, like my first fight, my UFC debut, I, I only had a couple weeks to prepare. Mm -hmm. um, change the altitude, um, different time zone, everything. And that's the first time I ever experienced anything like that. I mean, a lot of people say it's the UFC jitters, but I, I, I'm, I think personally I got to show what the difference between about three and a half weeks mm -hmm. to prepare for a fight and eight weeks difference to yeah. prepare for a fight. And I, I think it showed in my last fight. And you know who's the who's the best dancer in this group? You know, we see. I asked Longo because there's a guitar back there. He wouldn't sing us a song, but you know, I got a feeling who, who, when it comes down to it, who, who cuts the best rug at, at uh, Longo Weidman? You know, I don't want to pat myself in the back, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm probably 
the guy around here the most who's busting the dance move or two. Yeah, I, you know, <laughs> hey, you, you gotta, you got you gotta hold that title and strong. You know, like everybody in the gym's got that, gotta have that one strength when it comes down to it, right? So you not only you <laughs> teach wrestling class here, we just saw, but you're also, you can also uh, hold your own with the foot, get foot loose. That's where the footwork comes from. <laughs> Let me ask you too, what is up with Long Island traffic, man? It sucks, right? <laughs> it was it sucks. awful. It's terrible. It does. <laughs> it really does suck. Yeah, it, it, it is. So uh, you were um, you were gonna come back. Uh, you were supposed to fight uh, Mitch Gagnon, uh, and then uh, uh, are you thinking are you thinking uh, that you're gonna be early 2015? Oh, I'm hoping for. 2014, man. Yeah. I, got, I got one more for 2014. I ain't nice. done yet. I ain't done yet. Nice. I Perfect. think someone's going to probably get hurt or somebody's going to want to step up and I think an opportunity might, might come up on the horizon. I'm down, man. I'm training right now. Like I told Shelby, I told my manager, I'm training right now. So yeah. my hand was just a little setback and now I'm back on it. Yeah. And after. Well, we hope to see you again, man. Thanks, Al Jermaine. Well, Thanks. hey, road trippers. Uh, this is our last interview at uh, uh, Longo Weidman, and what a, what a great way to end it with this guy. All right, stay tuned. <laughs>